All right, so let's add our first Apex notes. The first thing that I'm gonna do actually, oh, actually I just noticed I forgot one thing to do here. I need to pull these down a little bit, make some room. Actually, I'll do this. Pull these down a little bit, make a little room. Notice how I did the rig doctor for my deform joint. Zoom in here a little bit, but I failed to do that here. That will bite us later on. We'll get some error message coming from the Apex auto rig components telling us that it's looking for a transform that it doesn't see. So let's fix that by adding an, a rig doctor right here so that we can initialize all those points, okay? And in fact, let's do move this to here and then uh, everything's, everything's perfect now. Okay, great. So now let's take all these and we're gonna punch that into a pack folder. And this is getting us ready for the first Apex rig component that we're gonna use. So I draw, I dragged the auto geo out, skeleton out guides in that order. And it kind of matters because we're going to need to name these a certain way. Okay. You can name these actually anything you want, but, um, your geometry needs to be of type shape. Your skeleton needs to be of type skeleton and your guides or your control points also need to be of type skeleton. So I'm going to name this base. I'm gonna name this one um, base as well, base skeleton, and I'm gonna name this guides, okay? And now we're ready to drag in our first auto rig component, our apex auto rig component. So let's do that. Let's drop the apex auto rig component, and the one that we're gonna use, actually, let me, let me kill that. I wanna call out one thing here. Back to our rig tree, Notice we have this hierarchy, literally it almost looks like a file system hierarchy. Those, these represents those three packed geometries, skeletons and guides that we just created. Okay. But now watch as I add an auto rig component and attach this, you'll notice that base.rig is also now part of our rig. And that is the apex system creating the automatic rig logic to handle FK transforms. It actually hasn't quite done that yet because I haven't chosen the component, but I'm gonna, right when I choose this FK transform component, it has now created an FK um, rig logic. And if you notice over here, if I select this, you'll notice a, a number of points. See root, bottom, see we've got Deform, which is sitting on top of root. I'm going to turn off the visualization again. And bottom. Root and deform are sitting on the same thing, which is, makes sense. And root and top. Okay, so now I, it's not allowing me to do much with that. Um, and the reason for that is over here in the controls. The only thing I'm able to do is rotate. If I put a star in these, other, in these others and hit refresh, now... I can actually move all of those points. And that logic that's allowing me to do that and control the rest transforms and everything else, and notice how I can move the parenting and all that stuff, that's all generated automatically with that FK transform component, okay? Now, if I hit reset here, they all go back to their rest positions, all right? So now let's drag uh, one more thing because you'll notice we lost our shape. We lost our, our, our geometry. So let's drag another auto rig component. And we're going to call this one. We're going to say bone deform. Okay. And now suddenly our shape shows up. Okay. And if I hit enter and go into the animates, you'll notice the animate button here is, is selected. If I select my top, nothing's happening here. If I select bottom, nothing happens. And in fact, if I select root, or I'm sorry, deform, then I'm actually able to move. If I select root, that actually moves everything as well because of our skeleton hierarchy, okay? But deform is actually the only one, the only joint that's actually bound to that geometry. And that's why you see the behavior that you see here, okay? And that, that geometry um, the ability to actually tie that joint uh, to the rig uh, and manipulate it has been automatically generated through this one component. Okay, so this is our FK component, and then this one was our um, bone deform.
component, okay? So now we're getting very close to writing some code here, but I'm gonna do a couple more things. I'm gonna drop another rig component, and this one's gonna do, it's just a pass-through, it's doing nothing. But what I'm gonna do coming out of this one is I'm gonna unpack the folder, okay? And you'll notice I suddenly see a whole bunch of stuff in my geometry spreadsheet, and I'm seeing a lot of stuff in here. I'm seeing um, callbacks, I'm seeing nodes, I'm seeing shapes, et cetera, et cetera. That's because I'm unpacking everything. And actually what I want is to just unpack that rig logic that was generated, okay? And now I wanna add a layout, an apex layout graph, because as we start to manipulate and add new nodes, this node gives me the ability to lay it out. And then I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna pack this again, actually pack the folder. So all I'm doing is manipulating the existing, the existing logic. And the way that I do that is I give it the same name and case matters here, by the way, is give the same name that it came out at. So if I go look at my uh, rig tree again, you see base.rig is there. If I name that something else, you know, Cameron, for instance, boom, I have a completely different copy. And that's not what I want, because I, I want to be showing and manipulating the existing base rig, okay? Now I'm going to add one more node, and that is the... Um, Apex scene animate. And it's this node that actually, if you go into animate mode, this is the guy that will actually allow you to start keyframing and saving that and doing your whole thing. Okay. So we are now ready to write some code.